Good morning. Today I wanted to take the opportunity to talk to you about working on pressed flower arrangements. Somebody on one of uh, my other videos had asked about some process videos, and yesterday I started to work on some arrangements, and as I was going along I thought this would be a good time to do that. So what I've done is here you can see a couple of items that I've already started. These are going to be bookmarks. I'm new to this whole video camera thing, so please forgive if there's fuzzy. And I want to do some uh, framed pictures. And I also want to do some 8 by 10s And there, none of these are glued down yet. This is just conceptualizing. I knew going into this session, and that's what I'll call it, uh, a session is where I'm going to make some arrangements, but I have no idea what, I'm, what I want to do. And so it's like staring at a blank page. I knew I needed to do bookmarks because I sold out of those at the last show I did. And there's a specific kind that I do. So I needed to, knew I needed to do those. I didn't have any more framed pictures left, so I needed to do those. And then other than that, I have no idea what the end product will be. And so therefore, we'll talk about different ideas. So I'm going to put these aside. This will probably be a multi-segment tutorial slash demonstration. And part two is where I'll actually uh, work on some items. These are ready to start doing the smaller fine details and of course and there's some blanks to get started on but I'm going to move these out of the way for now. I kind of put together an outline of what I think that these parts will be and this part today we're going to talk about tools to get started, inspiration and uh, ideas for break breaking the blank page, then backgrounds, and to color or not to color. And that will probably be, in part one, the, the largest sec section, the most time-consuming part of the video part one. So if you've ever wondered about that, this is definitely uh, a stay tuned for. Then in part two, we'll go into demonstrations, uh, coloring flowers and foliage. I'll sh actually show doing that and working on some arrangements. Then in part three, uh, we'll go upstairs where uh, the tools are, so to speak, and we'll go into detail about how to protect the flowers. We'll talk about what to use. We'll go into wet mediums like uh, matte medium, gloss medium, mod podge, and then hot laminates, cold laminates, contact paper, glass, resin. And then because I know that I'm making bookmarks in this session, I'll finish a couple bookmarks with hot laminate and uh, probably make a few stickers. We'll cut some out with some scissors or some fancy edge scissors and or maybe a die cutting machine. Uh, I'll assemble uh, one or two glass pictures that I finish up and then whatever else comes along in the meantime. So that's the thought process for this particular uh, series of videos to encompass what I'm working on right now. I'm going to keep this here so I don't uh, get all put it off to the side. Let's do that. Okay, the first thing is tools to get started. That's a very, very simple matter. You need toothpicks and you need glue. I use Elmer's glue. And then water. I like mine in a spray bottle, and when we actually get to the demonstration video, you'll see why. I have at least two pairs of tweezers. Let me show you those in detail. I have a round nose pair. Thin. Uh, they, they go real thin. They're easy to, uh, to move in and out. Over the years, I've had some tweezers when you're moving them in and out, they're so, so stiff that it, it really makes for carpal tunnel syndrome. So if you can get a pair of good tweezers that have nice uh, thin tips and 
are easy to move. I love these tweezers. So these are a mainstay. And then the other one, these are really fine tip. When I want to drill down and get something small, this is it. So these I can't live without. And I've used these for, I've had these tweezers forever. And if I ever lose this pair, I'll be devastated. So tweezers. Paper towels. And I use, I use two lids. You can see my grungy, grimy lids. I have one that I prop my other one up on. Just so that when I put my glue in the lid, it, it kind of all wells down to one area because it doesn't take much glue. And in the next video, when you see me putting some glue in this dish, you'll know we're getting serious. Basically what I do is I set up my paper towel. I set up my glue station. And that's it. So then the next thing we have to think about is what are we going to make? Okay, we have all our tools together. Now what? What are we going to do? Are we going to make bookmarks? Here's some, here's one that I've already punched the hole in. Here's another color. Here's some that I've just cut to size, but I haven't done anything with them yet. Most of the bookmarks that I make, uh, they, I arch them. This is the bookmark that I'm making. This is going to be the cardstock. And then, let me get my tweezers. Can't live without tweezers. And then, what I'm working on is basically this is what this is what we're doing. I'm sorry, I'm moving around. Okay, so this panel will go on this cardstock, and then it will get hot laminated, and then I will arch it or do whatever fancy uh, edge you want to do. You can do the traditional style. You can arch it. You can. Uh, die cut it or whatever you want to do, but that's what that's what these specific pieces that I'm working on for bookmarks is going to be used for. They're going to be put on these kind of cardstock, just so that you know what what these are being used for. So you're going to make a bookmark. Are you going to make a card? If you are, just get a piece of paper and. Figure out what size you want the car to be. Do you want it to be portrait? Do you want it to be landscape? And then do you want to create your arrangement right on the cardstock? Or do you want to use some sort of panel on top of that? And I'll go more about that in a minute. Perhaps you uh, have a party coming up and you uh, want to do some table tents with uh, somebody's name on it. You can make uh, table tents out of this. You can do some flower arranging and a little calligraphy and then and then set them on the table. Uh, these I actually have folded for gift and closure cards. So I'm going to put an arrangement on the front. Uh, also, I have some little white envelopes this that will fit this size card. And I'm going to make some gift enclosures out of this. really like this paper. It's kind of got a sheen. This is parchment paper. I'm really uh, partial to parchment paper. Do you have a die cutting machine? And if so, you can pre-cut out some uh, designs, and then which I did here, and I'll put the flowers on here. And then I'll put this on a backing paper. Uh, let me just use a, a bookmark, for example. I'll put it on a backing paper, backing, backing cardstock of some sort. And then what I'll probably do is laminate or put contact paper. Of course, I'd cut that down to, to a better size and lay contact paper over it. So there's something else you can do. Uh, are you going to make a picture? Are you going to put something under glass? So what are you going to do with the flowers? That's the next consideration. 
tools, and then what are you going to do with the flowers? Here's some, here's some things that uh, I've kind of accumulated. So let's say you're not sure what you can do with the flower, so you just start grabbing stuff and throwing it together. Um, here's something else I cut with a dye machine. We're just going through here. Here's some flowers that I just, for some reason, bought. Uh, these are tags that I made. They're um, embossed. That This is for dried flowers. I make dried flower tags, too, out of the Everlastings. Um, so that's what those are. So these are just, here's some more die cuts that are ready for flowers. Here's some more things that I have ready. I have these little mini frame, easel frames, and so I've cut some paper for them. Here's some of that lacy, uh, fancy paper for background. Here's some hearts, some more die cuts. And then here is, here's pieces for jewelry. And jewelry is a whole sub-segment within itself. I'm not even going into much about, outside of a casual comment here or there about jewelry making. Um, that is something that needs to be tackled separately. And so that will come later. But just suffice it to say that for jewelry, um, I do have some pre-cut uh, items. And then I also do non-pre-cut items. It just kind of depends, but that's what these particular things are for, and these little tiny, tiny pieces. They're for jewelry. So we're not working on any of these today. It's just stuff that I got there in case I go, oh, hey, I got that piece sitting over on the shelf. Let's do something with it, and there it is. Okay, so then you need flowers. So here's, here's a couple of panels of flowers that I pulled for the bookmarks and the, the pictures that we're going to be working on and doing a demonstration on in the next segment. So I pulled these, and I pulled these, and I have another one, oh, and I pulled these. And then I have, really want to get into my bin. Then I've got all this stuff. Oh, there we go. A nice live video where I, <laughs> okay. How did they do on live videos? Don't sweat the small stuff. So we won't. And this was my scrap heap anyway, so <laughs> that's a good thing. Let me put the stuff that I really want to keep clean out of the way. Okay, let me pile this back up and move the tweezers here. Let me get this out of the way. Those flowers are glued so I can I can move them. So you're watching a real live demo here. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to grab my tweezers. I'm going to start picking stuff up. And now I'm really glad that I have this cardboard here because What I can do is just, there, okay, problem solved. Anyway, there's uh, more flowers here that when I'm being more careful and going through them, that it's just, I, I pull them. I use them for things, and then if I don't use them on something, I kind of throw them into this pile. Scrape this cardboard off. Put it back down in case we have another emergency happen. We can <laughs> clean up our area real quick. Okay, so back to the task at hand. So you need flowers, and you need a background. So we've already talked about backgrounds. What are you going to make? Now, here's the, here's the, um, 
Here's the question that I've been tackling with, how to broach the subject of to color or not to color. Because I color enhance everything that I sell to the public, for the most part. There are some things that don't need it, like buttercup, but for the most part, I do. And I'm going to go into a little story about why I do it. Um, let me put some visuals back so that you have something to look at, because now I'm just going to talk for a second. I started out pressing flowers as a teenager, and I'm an old lady now, so that's been decades ago. And back then, um, I did what I would imagine most of you starting out do. You either go, pick, you either have a couple of flowers in your in your yard, in your friend's yard, or you go out to the meadow and go, you know, for a country drive, and you pick a few flowers, or you can buy some flowers online. Every once in a while, I have some flowers on my website at msplace.com, although I don't want my videos to be a commercial. Uh, but mostly, I focus on finished products. So. Um, while you can find some flowers to craft with on my website, that's not the focal point. That's not my main business. Um, my main business is actually uh, men's wet shaving. That's, that's the bread and butter. And the arts part of it is uh, my passion. And, and so that's, that's how that develops. But anyway, the point being, in those days, I just uh, primarily focused on framed prints, or not framed prints, but framed flower pictures of 5x7s, 8x10s, 11x14s, 16x20s, things like that, and on up. And I used material for the background. I didn't even use paper back then. And I would uh, put them on my wall, or I'd give them to people for Christmas, or birthdays, or special occasions, that kind of thing. And, and so I didn't even think about coloring anything. That wasn't even in my radar. And as, you know, a number of years passed, and I, I left one location where I was living when I was younger as a teenager, and started growing up and traveling and moving around, uh, when I lived in Seattle, my ex-husband had no, uh, knew a guy where he went to the cafe all the time for coffee. And that was one of those kind of cafes where uh, you see the artwork on the wall and the business card with a price, so if you wanted to buy it, you could do it. Well, I had uh, flowers pictures with me, the frame pictures. And I asked him, I said, can I display some of my pictures there? And he said, yes. And so I did, and lo and behold, they sold. And even to the point where uh, a lady wanted to um, have me do a custom arrangement for her because she had a particular color scheme that she wanted. Well, we were in limbo, meaning that we didn't actually live steadily in the Seattle area. We were staying with friends and traveling uh, on our way to Alaska. And so I wasn't in a position to be able to do that. But um, that's when I really started thinking about more the commercial aspect to the flower pressing. So when we finally arrived in Alaska and got a place to live, and I was able to collect some Alaska flowers and start making more arrangements and that type of thing and landed in Homer. Uh, I went and I used to go around like people do when they want to sell things and go to the gift shops and the galleries. And of course, Homer was pretty small, so they only had one gallery. But anyway, um, I, I talked to the owner of the gallery and asked her, can I uh, put some pictures in your gallery and see if they sell? And she was nice enough and she said, yeah. Well, at that time, I used to work on fishing boats uh, seasonally. And so I, at the beginning of the uh, spring, I took a bunch of pictures to her. Well, by a bunch, I'm probably I'm talking like, you know, eight or ten. And I was gone all summer. I was on a boat. I was on a salmon tender working. And when I came back uh, at the end of the summer and went by to see if anything had sold, I was like, oh, I wonder if anything sold. And... I would have felt lucky if one or two items sold. Lo and behold, I went in there and they were all gone. I couldn't believe it. It's like, you gotta be kidding me. And she wanted more. Well, I'd been gone all summer, so I I wasn't in a position to make more and I, so I didn't have any. But that was that was the, the aha moment, that, that aha moment where you go, wow. Because I know flowers fade. Now we're gonna get into some show and tell. I'm done with that dissertation. 
that's why I started thinking about color enhancing is because now I was moving from giving things to, to family and friends and myself and to now people were paying money. And while I never been able to make a business out of it, like putting food on the table, um, it pays for itself. So over the years, I did some experiments. So here we go in color enhancing. Uh, let me move these out of the way. Let me show you a couple things here. Let me get a piece of cardboard so I can raise this up. Okay. This is my original logo, and if you go to my website today, there are a couple of pages where you are, let me put it the right way, where you are going to see this design. And this was where it came from. And this is about, well, it, it, it was launched with my website. My website launched in, 97, in 1997, so that's um, 18 years, almost 18 years now. I don't know, 20 years, 97, 20, 2017. Yeah, 20 years. So that's 20 years, and I made it before the website launched. So this is probably going on 21 years old, this particular. And, of course, I saved it because I don't throw anything away. Um, but look at how well it held up. Look at how the, well the colors held up. I mean, these things are just... Now, they, they were color enhanced, but, uh, I mean, really, it still looks good. Something else that if you go to my home page, um, you are going to see three images across toward the top, and the center one uh, is an animated GIF, and it goes through twice, it animates twice and then stops because I, I just don't like things that keep going and going and going and going and going. It drives me nuts. It's like, show me a couple times and then stop. So anyway, and what that is, what I did there, and I don't want to destroy these things, so let me put this down for a minute. Let me get into the corner here. Okay, so what I did there, that's this guy the right way. And what this was is I had a scanner and I did this and then I'd glue down. I started of course with the main flower and then I scanned it and then I put a few more things on I scanned it and I put a few more things and I scanned it and I think um, I haven't counted how many frames. I think there's at least eight or maybe nine frames and what what it is like I say on the home page is it shows this being created. Um, as each subsequent uh, layer is put on there, and this is the what the this is the um, the original. This is what it ended up being when the when the arrangement was all said and done. And this is phlox and uh, lobelia, phlox, phlox blossom, uh, the silver artemisia type foliage, coral bells, and uh, Queen Anne's lace. But even that still doesn't look bad. And again, this is at least over 20 years old. And then, let me take this whole pile out now. So what I did was, these are, these are, I just wanted to test and see how, these are not colored, how they held their color over time. This is a, uh, this is a form of a clematis. It was a bluish color, ivy, yarrow leaf, um, geum, verbena, red verbena, a uh, wallflower. Uh, different leaves, grass. But you see how they, they turn kind of a brownish color? I mean, they still are nice as far as texture and shape is concerned. Uh, Queen Anne, more leaves, more leaves. This this actually held its color really well. I really love this stuff. This was a, a sold as a form of an oregano, and I've never had it since. I don't have it anymore, but I love, love, love this stuff, and I, I wish I had more. So don't overlook your herbs. I can't stress that enough. Okay, more. I flip through these faster. This is uh. 
Sweet Pea, Lupin, Pansy, mm, I don't remember what that was, Asparagus Fern. Look at how well this color held. This is uh, Oregano Florets. I use this, I'm, I love this stuff, this is a mainstay. And uh, Lovelia. Oh, I love this one too. Oh, uh, I can't remember what that is. I don't have it anymore, and if I ever find it, I'll find it again. And you can see where after 20 years, there's just a little bit of, of decomposing on a few of these items. Now this one is has got it more. Now let me take an... I don't see any vermin crawling around or any little bugs, but... I'm sure there's something microscopic in there because because there's a little dust, but you know, still, for 20 years, nothing protecting it except for sandwiched. Here's a, now this, it looks like I did color. I, I did think I used a marker on that, so there is some coloring on that, but there isn't on anything else. There's no coloring there. Even the bleeding hearts held up pretty good, and see how well um, Montbrecia holds up? This is, you know, and even, even some of the colors of the Larkspur family. This is uh, Delphinium. This is Cosmos. Heather. Queen Anne's. Or uh, Lady's Mantle. Now, this I did. It uh, looks like I used some sort of marker on that. So this is colored. Oh, it's not even glued on. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, why is this on there? Because this was supposed to be non-colored. Well, it's it's uh, it's not part of this whole thing. And then I was making light switches, so I I made some templates. Uh, I don't know why they're they're part of this whole thing, but anyway, that's. Let me move this aside. Uh, I will uh, put it back together later. Now you might be asking yourself, why am I showing you these things? Because I want you to see um, why I color enhance. It's because I want uh, I want somebody in five years or ten years to have something that still has a little bit of vibrancy. Um, this was done in I dated it up oh, ten fifteen ninety eight, and this is just more. Things there's no coloring here, uh, no artificial coloring. It's just just to see how things lasted for it's going on 20 years. Now contrast that with now here's a paperweight. This uh, I gave to my my husband's mother, who's subsequently passed away. May she rest in peace. And so that's why I have it back. And this has got to be almost 20 years old, too. There's some, something on it that needs to be clean. But anyway, and you can see how well that even after, you know, 15, 20 years, like I, said, um, like I said, I'm not sure. I know it's been at least 15, but probably going on 20, how well the colors are. I mean, the Larkspur and the, and the Pansy, I don't know if you're getting any, any glare, and the and the lupin all look pretty much how they did. The only thing that's really faded much is the fan flower. That's the bluish color. They were more blue, so they've mellowed. And the point being that had I not tinted those fan flowers, they would be more of a brown rather than still having some blue color. And so you know, and there, there wouldn't be as much vibrancy as on any of the other stuff. So that's why. And then here's another one that she that I gave her. And um, again, this is probably about 20 years old. And the pressed flowers are, are on the base, so there's corobell leaves. And then this aquaclinium is still pink, although it smelled a, a little bit. It was light pink to start with. And so that's why I color them. I want to know that when I sell somebody an arrangement, that in five years they're still going to have some nice color there, and hence taking it from um, 
press flower arrangement to press flower art. And then the next question becomes, what do I color with? And I spent years, because remember, I decided I was going to start playing around with color enhancement back when I lived in Alaska, and that's been over 30 years ago. And so I spent probably a good decade playing around with different mediums before I landed on the last 20 years what I'm using now, basically, more or less. And so during that time, I tried watercolors, and that was an epic fail because it was too wet, as you might imagine. Um, pastels, over here. Let me show you some, okay. First, let me show you something that was an, the, the biggest epic fail ever, ever known, and that was Marks a lot. For those of you old enough to remember, and maybe they still make them, I don't know, but I, I don't have any anymore. And and, uh, and that specific blank brand, look what happened. Now, this was pre 20 years ago. This was pre what I'm using now. And I was playing around, and this is a bookmark back before I had a hot laminating machine. So this is cardstock on the back, and then contact paper on the front, and this was con contact brand contact paper. And this was uh, different coloring mediums. And look what the marks a lot did. It just, it just bled. Fortunately, it happened really fast. I didn't sell anything with this particular configuration on it. But uh, that's what that yellow bleeding is. And this uh, hydrangea, that has pastel on it. So the pastel is has kind of passed the test of time. Uh, I didn't do anything to the daisies except I dabbed some acrylic paint on the center, which I, I don't really like. It needs to be a little bit more subtle. Um, this is pastels in the center of these uh, potentia. And uh, anyway, the point is that was an epic fail. So watercolor failed, the marks a lot failed, uh, the pastels worked, but uh, they they were kind of time consuming, but you can use them. What I, what I did with the pastels is I shaved a little off and I had a little egg dish and I put different colors in the little egg dish. As a matter of fact, I probably still have that around somewhere and it probably still has pastels in it. Uh, and then I'd take a, a tiny brush and then I'd, I'd dip it in the, the powder and then I would take a a flower, and then I would, you know, brush it on the flower, and then wipe the excess off. But while it worked okay for certain things, I, uh, yeah. if you're trying to sell things and get, make more than five cents an hour, that's not exactly going to do it. So this is an, a, a demonstration of failure. And it also uh, was a good lesson for me because then I started have to being concerned about, okay, if I'm going to use a colorant, then I have to think about what am I going to put on the top of the flowers? So if you're going to put your flowers under glass, you don't have to worry about anything. You can use whatever you want. Just let your creative artisticness come out and use anything because you have no considerations at all about anything bleeding or interfering with the medium that you're using because uh, you know people who are artists or work with different pens and paints and all that know that there's water based and then there's solvent based and you know there's you know alcohol based and and they all have different attributes and so um, you have to be concerned about what you're going to put on top of your flowers and how it's going to react. The glue on contact paper, whatever they use as, as, as the, the adhesion, did not agree with the marks a lot. So you have to be cognizant of, of what you're putting on top. Glass is, is a, a no-brainer, um, but anything else you do. And resin, of course, uh, there's other things that you have to do to your flowers. Uh, before resin, you, well, let me backtrack. You don't have to do anything, but resin will 
uh, really make your flowers go translucent or transparent and um, will mess with them greatly if you don't put something over the flowers to protect them from the resin. But that's, again, a subject for another video because the resin I do sometimes for jewelry. So we'll go into detail on that later. Uh, here's another real old one. And I know they're old because there's no hot laminate on it. And I... I uh, and before I had a hot laminate machine, like I say, I um, I just put uh, contact paper on the front. So I know that these are like 20 years, over 20 years old. This is poppies. And this I used a um, another kind of marker, not the marks a lot. And you can see it did fine. It didn't bleed. And the colors held up for, well, well over 20 years. And I'm always looking, was always looking for things that when the color got laid down, that it didn't look overly fake. This one looks pretty natural, in my opinion. But this is starting to look almost, you know, too much. But mm, the buttercups, the, I didn't, I don't do anything to buttercups, so you can see they still have their color. But that's just, uh, that was a, mark, a marking pen. So nowadays I am stuck on what I use today, which is what I'm going to going to go into now. And I have to tell you a story. So fast forward if if this isn't inter if this isn't interesting. Um, backtracking one more second, I also tried acrylics. The acrylics made everything look too much like plastic, but at that time I didn't didn't have a good knowledge of mediums like matte mediums and gloss mediums and and different things that uh, glaze uh, what they call it glazing mediums to thin down the paints and so I was using them pretty much full strength and that was just like laying plastic on the flowers and I, I hated that so that went away really quickly so, so maybe nowadays um, that would be better because I use a, a form of something that has acrylic -y type compounds in it so I think the the um, the dilution and the medium you use to dilute it plays a big part. And let me tell you a quick story and then we'll get into what I'm using now. And that is, in my quest to find something that, that I could use to uh, color things, I'll set this here for a visual while I talk. Some of these have been uh, color enhanced, some of them haven't. Some of them, I like this, I actually uh, bought these. I, I didn't press those and I didn't color those myself, but they are colored. You can tell. That's just not supernatural. Um, but in my quest to find something that worked, I bought this spray stuff. I went to the craft store and I was looking in the fabric aisle because I tried everything else and I saw this these bottles, these eight ounce bottles that said, great for spraying on your, you know, coloring your ribbons and your your dried flower arrangements, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and I thought, well, I'll try anything once. So I picked up a bottle and I used it, and oh my word, I couldn't believe it! It was it was everything I ever wanted that I was ever looking for in a medium. It was perfect. I didn't, of course, use didn't spray it, which because it came on the spray top because that's not what I need. But I I took the spray top off and I used a brush, and it was perfect. So anyway, I had a, a couple of colors and bought a couple colors more and then I wanted more and when I went back to get more it was gone and I asked the people there well can you get more no we're not getting more they discontinued it and I said you've got to be kidding me and I started panicking because here I'd finally found the perfect thing to use and they discontinued it and so um so fortunately it was one of those kind of bottles that has I don't know if Elmer's has it but you know how a lot of these bottles have uh phone numbers on there this one doesn't. But anyway, fortunately, that, that bottle had had a phone number on it. And so I called. And it must have been the right person on the right day in the right frame of mind. And she she heard this whole little sob story that I'm giving you right now. Oh, my gosh, I finally found something that's perfect. Wah, wah, wah. And, and so I told her my saga and what I was using it for. <clears throat> and she took, must have took pity on me. She goes, well, just do this. She said, go to the store, buy some fabric paint, and then dilute it down, <clears throat> excuse me, with uh, one part vinegar 
and her recipe was one part vinegar and three parts water, um, which I, I did do that for a little bit, but actually mine now is one part vinegar, two parts water, one part rubbing alcohol in this bottle. And then I have other bottles with other variants, like one part vinegar, uh, one part water, one part rubbing alcohol. And then I have another bottle that is 50-50 vinegar and rubbing alcohol and no water. So here's your medium. Make your, get yourself a bottle and some white vinegar and use some vinegar and some rubbing alcohol and water. There's 70% uh, rubbing alcohol and 91% rubbing alcohol. Uh, I don't think it really matters, except for if I was using the 91% rubbing alcohol, I would probably add just a little bit of water because that's pretty getting pretty potent. And then she said, get fabric paint. So I was, okay, I'll get fabric paint. So here is... Here's two kinds of fabric paint. Here's one by Delta. It says, Delta fabric dye, brush on fabric color, soft touchable paint. And this one is from Folk Art, and it says, brush on for textiles, feel soft. So that's what I am using. I still have some of the uh, spray on stuff that I bought years ago. Uh, but I, this is what I've purchased uh, that I can also use. This is, let me show you, excuse me for bending. Let me get my tray here. Let me move this out of the way. So we're going to do it without spilling. Okay, this is my color tray. Some of these have colors that were actually from those spray bottles a long time ago and I took them out of the spray bottles and I filled these up and what I like about this is I can open the top and I can just dip my brush in and get what I need and put my top back on and really convenient so that's what I do here so pretty much 90% of everything that I do is done with these trays or these colors these uh So, supplies for color enhancing flowers. These are just, uh, you know, when, I, when you buy craft supplies and you get these, these, uh, you tear the plastic or whatever this stuff is off. Well, I save the trays and then I use these for little palettes. Then I've got a few brushes. The ones that I use the most are this one and this one, and this one. Those are the three that I use the most. I've got like a uh, small, medium, and large. So, see that? And then you need, okay, so you've got your paint brushes, your paper towels, your tweezers, and then my water. Paint, paper towel, tweezers, water, paint brushes. That's really all you need. And that will do about 80 to 90 percent of, of uh, everything. Now, there's a few flowers like something really sheer. This actually colors well, and this has already been colored, uh, but I was looking for something that I could use when I just wanted to do one or two one-offs for arrangements, and I didn't want to paint them because uh, verbena, forget-me-nots, things like that are so small and so sheer that using even that medium, that wet medium, was almost too much. So the last couple of months I've been playing around, I was in the craft store a couple of months ago and I was looking down the fabric aisle because I hadn't really looked in, in many years because I'm happy with what I was using. And I found these. These were our tulip fabric markers.
Tulip Dual Tip Fabric Marker. Permanent. Now make sure it's permanent and brush tip. It has to have a brush tip, it has to be permanent, and it has to be for fabric. And I thought, okay, I'll try it. Then I also got to try Stained by Sharpie. These are Stained by Sharpie brush tip fabric markers. And it comes in, what's that, two, four, six, eight, eight colors. And I did a sheet for testing that I will show you in the next video because I didn't bring it down with me and I don't want to leave to go up and get it. Uh, but before I, nowadays, before I take any medium to my flowers, I will test them for water, rubbing alcohol, acetone, mineral spirits, glossy accents, um, Jenkins Diamond Glaze, and matte medium. I've got Liquitex matte medium. And I even uh, also tried um, ammonia. And again, like I said, I'll show you, show you that sheet. I tested this and this and my, my paints over there and Tombow's. Uh, and non-fabric Sharpies, and I'll show you what happened. So if that's of interest to you, that will be in the next video. I'll show you that. But the point is that these three things that I'm showing you here passed all of the things that I just mentioned and did not bleed and did not run. And I figure if an item can go through all those, what was that, five, seven, eight different items that I just named off, um, if it can go through all those items and not bleed and not run, then the chances are pretty doggone good that they are going to hold up under contact paper or cold laminate or hot laminate or, you know, if I modge podge on top or, or I put liquid mediums on top, if it's water-based, alcohol-based, you know, it would, I don't have to think about it. It'll hold up. So you can use anything you want if you decide that you want to move into color-enhancing flowers. Uh, but definitely do the test, or you're going to be really disappointed because you'll have this, and this is not good. But I've already tested these out for you, and uh, at least at the present moment, these have, have a, 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 at least an M stamp of approval, if you will. <laughs> so for whatever that is or isn't worth. Um... Okay, so I'm not doing any processing in this video, so I've rambled on long enough. Um, if you're just starting out, don't be overwhelmed with anything I've said. You do not have to color enhance flowers, or maybe you're a person that, you know, you think that, um, or you feel that uh, color enhancing flowers should be taboo because they should be natural. Um, all those points of view are valid, and everybody can have their own opinion. And based on what your needs are and your feelings are, color enhance, don't color enhance, uh, learn what flowers hold their color better, which flowers fade faster. Um, maybe you don't care because actually faded flowers are also very beautiful. I, it's not like I have anything against faded flowers. Uh, it's just that I feel that if sweet people are gonna, people are gonna pay me for my work, uh, I just needed to take it up a notch. And that's really what it was all about. I just needed to move move it up a notch from from the hobby to, to something a little bit more uh, uh, along the artistic, now you now I'm making money. So, so that decision is just uh, an individual one for each person. But I don't want someone to think, oh, I, I, I don't want to color enhance flowers, or I can't color enhance flowers, or I'm not interested in it. And so therefore, I'm not going to press anything because uh, now I'm all depressed that they're going to fade. Well, you know, I just want to say, don't, don't, don't let that stop you because a couple things. One is pressing the flowers and finding the flowers and the experience of going out into the meadows or, or you know, becoming one with nature. It, it, it's it, what's that old saying? It's it's the journey. It's about the journey, not the destination. And a lot of this is about the journey. It's about the joy and and the things that you do along the way if you press your own flowers. And when you open your your books or your microwave pet press or you iron, you do whatever, uh, just looking at them is beautiful. And so 
don't let that stop you. And if you're giving something away as a card or something like that, it's not meant to be, you know, kept around for years and years and years anyway. It's meant to be enjoyed and appreciated for a while, and then a lot of them, you know, don't 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 stand stay around. So it just depends. So start small, start natural, and then if you decide that you want to elevate your your uh, your task or your art, then then move up. And uh, hopefully this color demonstration that I'm going to be doing and that I've shared with you uh, will save you a lot years and years of research. Don't forget the watercolor. Don't bother getting them out. So so anyway, that's why I need to start stop rambling now. See if there's anything in my notes that we didn't go over. Tools to get started. I'll go into more inspiration and, and, and breaking a blank page when we actually get into the demonstration uh, part of the video. The background. Oh, I, I do want to show you a couple more background ideas. Uh, fabric. You can use any kind of fabric, but something else that's kind of fun is, is this is a... Uh, I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but... Try to ice oh here. I want to isolate it. See? That would be beautiful. Just the texture on there. You would want to find a way to put your you know, to to put your fabric down on your backing board so it doesn't, you know, get all crumpled and messed up. But that would be beautiful. I mean really any fabric will work. But I just thought that was beautiful. Here's another lacy type fabric. Find a good end. Okay. I love lace. What can I say? But look at how beautiful that is. Oh my. As a matter of fact, looking at this makes me think I need to do this. I hadn't thought about using fabric in years and years and years, but now that looking at this. I think I need to do that. Wouldn't a, wouldn't a little arrangement on that be absolutely gorgeous? I really like this whole color scheme too. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. We're, I'm talking about inspiration. Where does inspiration come in from? You just play around and go, oh, wow, okay, I'm, that, that inspired me. I really like that. So there you go. I'm, it's gonna, this is going to be on the to-do list. Um, some other papers and backgrounds. Uh, these are those the fancy handmade kind of papers that have things embedded in them. And I really uh, love I have I'm a paper fanatic. And or I should say I have a paper fetish, but with the right color scheme of flowers, it it, it, it would be beautiful. So here's, here's some different kinds of paper. This would be nice for making, you know, little squares. I wanted to make a picture. Uh, I've got bigger sheets of this, but one, one thing on my to-do list is to use this paper in a larger frame, say a, a 16 by 20 or an 11 by 14 or something like that, and then put uh, many arrangements in each of these different squares. So that's that's on the to-do list. And there's some more fiber paper. And uh, here's some beautiful paper. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it's got a sheen to it. It's got uh, it's got little fiber, shiny fibers. There's some more fiber paper in a different color. Here's another fiber paper. These are sheer. I don't know if you can tell on the video. Here's a gray fiber paper. I used to have some stainless steel canisters that I, that I sold as part of the men's wet shaving to hold shaving soaps. And in looking for things for men, um, I wanted, and the, the top was flat, 
I don't have one in here. I'd show you what I'm talking about. But anyway, what I... Oh, yeah, I do. It's holding an egg that I'm working on. <laughs> it's holding an egg that I'm working on. And I was working on it, playing around with an ornament. Um, but anyway, uh, here. That's what I did with... Uh, I was playing... It was... Uh, this is... This is a reject because it's not perfectly round and I'm a perfectionist. It's, it's, but anyway, you can get the idea of what I was doing. So I was, um, I was decoing up lids on these stainless steel canisters so that I could offer options. And this is one of the papers that I used. And it works really good. Let's see if there's any other interesting papers in here. Here's some more lace paper. Look at how beautiful that is. That's just gorgeous. See that? There's another lace paper. And more lace paper, more colors. Here's some of those botanical papers that have the botanicals embedded in them. And then here's some of that square paper in the green botanicals. Here's one that's got some gold flecks in it and more botanical paper. So anyway, you get the idea to, um, these would be good. A lot of these I'll use in larger framed pictures. I, I don't, I use more subtle backgrounds usually with a flower so that it doesn't overpower the flowers. Um, but there's a lot of things that you can do with these. Okay. That's it. I'm going to end this video now. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, hopefully you learned a couple things. And I will go into some actual demonstrations uh, in the next video. So if that's what you're looking for, then please come back and visit again. Have a great day. Thank you.